too great. So they, 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 they grab onto it. And once they seize it and they fall in love with it, Satan and that power, the, they, they share a common ambrosia with Satan, this great power and authority over others, this great advantage they have through the money. And they love it. They, so they love their lives in this world. The exact opposite of what Jesus said. You can't do that. Like the Laodiceans, the warnings and revelations, where he says that, you know, you, you say that I'm rich, I'm well healed, I'm in need of nothing. You know, so they don't, they get cocky. They don't need God. They forget where the fruit on the trees come from. They forget where the fish in the ocean come from. They forget where the trees that built their house came from. They forget all that stuff and they just, they trust in their riches. And it's to their own demise. I mean, they're going to a painful place when they realize I have been out of touch with God. My heart was not clean. It was not pure. It was adulterated. It was tainted. It was fouled up from the ways of this world. So in that same passage from Revelations, talking about the Laodiceans, God says, you're wrong. Don't you know that you're wretched and blind and naked and that you make me want to puke and I'm going to barf you out of my mouth because you're lukewarm? It's like in Isaiah, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They don't know God. It doesn't matter if they go to church every week. If they're out of touch with the spirit of truth, that you know, puts compunction in their heart. You know, the way I talk about how I've got too much stuff. But if most Americans could look in at my private finances, they would they would laugh. They would, you know, <clears throat> yeah, this guy, he's ashamed that he's got too much stuff. Okay. I mean, you live in America, a land of milk and honey, brother. And you, you drive a 17-year-old car and a 40-year-old work vehicle. And, and you live like this, okay? And you are ashamed and you feel spoiled that you got too much. But remember, it's all subjective. It's all relative. So, yes, compared to some poor bastard that's going to die out on the street tonight or that committed some crime and he's got to spend his days in some prison cell and it all had to do with money. I mean, you watch so many of these forensic files cases and the law and order. It's everything at the end of most money, money, money. And even when people do stuff because they're jealous, there could be money in the underlying, you know, like Jesus said, it's the root of all of the evil, not some of the evil. So the things that people are induced to do, okay, they might not have done if somehow money didn't tie in this fouled up so-called reality that's been shoved down our throats. So let's all just be honest and get this thing, okay? And understand that, uh, you know, this is a powerful force we're up against, man. The money. And we've got to wean ourselves off it. We've got to get off the junk, okay? And so you tell me how we're going to get off the junk. I mean, some people will get into the excruciating minutia and debate. Oh, well, we should or shouldn't raise interest rates. And here's the pros and cons. And, and this is what's bad about credit default swaps and derivatives. And, oh, let's talk about the gross domestic product. And let's talk about trade. Let's talk about the unemployment level. And all this crap. Let's talk about the budget and all, you know, the minutia. It's like, dude, I'm telling you, you know what? I mean, with one full swoop, I could fix this mess. But somebody's got to listen, and somebody's got to implement it. Somebody's got to get it. I think Trump gets it. Does he know that that his office is secondary, though, to Janet Yellen's office? That, indeed, she's the one that's most powerful? Because if she actually gave us sound financial policy, sound economic policy, sound money, and we could make real progress across the board... And we'd see pro prosperity increase across the board. That wealth and income disparity would fall, would shrink. Poverty would shrink. Um, you know, and we'd be on the right track. Maybe it is time. Maybe God's saying, look, we're down to the wire now. The end of the age is near. Okay. And uh, you're not going to be able to stop progress anymore. That the worm's going to turn. And all the combined forces of darkness are not going to stop the worm from turning. So let's get on board this Trump train and, you know, and make Janet Yellen work for the people of America, not some of the people. OK, we've got to talk about these things. What would have happened in 08? This to me is more of this civil war I talked about, a war against the people of America at large, a domestic war. 
So we would have seen what I told you you would have seen. Housing prices would have plummeted. That would have been a market correction. Rents would have plummeted. And it would have been good for the poor, a very good thing for the poor, low-wage workers. And if wages, if they were tied in with the cost of living, the Labor Department said no. If there's an increase in the cost of living, and these are the commodities and services we're going to count in our market basket of goods as we calculate the CPI, cost price index, the inflation rate, then uh, this is what the wages are going to go to. And if they did that every year without fail, it would have seemed nominal, and people would have accepted it. It would have said, yes, your well, wages are $40 an hour now because it was tied in with the cost of living. And what's unreasonable about that? What's radical about that? As a check and balance, a way to keep things in check, to make sure they don't get out of whack and balance, that it doesn't allow this wealth and income disparity and doesn't allow the poverty to grow. Why is that so radical? Or if interest rates could have done that, like Max, Max Kaiser says. So why is that so radical? You see, there's more than one way to skin a cat. That's what I'm talking about here. So, I think I've talked this thing to death. More than one way to skin a cat. More, more, way, more than one way to produce prosperity across the board. As a solution to all our problems. Remember, all the problems start going away. And that's what these devout establishmentarians have been fighting against. Talk about a bad religion. That's a bad religion, man. They're buying into Satan. They're buying into the beast system. Can't work. It's a Ponzi scheme, pyramid scheme. It's destined to destruction by deliberation. They knew it wasn't going to work. But they're going to keep kicking the can as far as they can, pushing the envelope as far as they can to keep us on this trajectory as long as they can to try to increase your taxes, your burden, your cost of living, okay, and just pull the wool over people's eyes. And people get willfully stupid, and, and, and they revel in their stupidity. Like Rich Dad, not admitting that, hey, this is bad. Yeah, I know it's bad for the nation at large to play off this debt, to benefit from the national debt. But, hey, I'm riding this wave, man. I'm rich, so, but he's always in debt, he says, yet he can tap into these vast sums of money that he just sits on. He lets the investment ride. This is a problem with investments. You let them ride. They keep the people, keep them in there, in, in their investments. They don't, they're not helping the guy on Main Street. They're not helping the public at large. They're not helping to solve this wealth and income disparity. They're not helping to end poverty. So let's be honest, folks. Well, for a guy that's always talking about having faith, you can see how much I struggle to have a little bit of faith myself, you know. And, um, and that's what I mean about having a little peace of mind, you know, a little peace in my soul is just, just believing that, you know, God's will is going to be done. And, you know, I, so I have to kind of move away from the guy I used to be into the guy that I want to be more. And I want to be a guy that's spending more time stopping to smell the roses, to doing the things that I'm always telling others they ought to do. And uh, as such, you know, I'm just really going to try to trust God and have that little bit of faith. Like Jesus said, you don't need a lot of faith, but you need the faith of a mustard seed. And you've got to go out and do something with that faith. Like it said, faith without works is dead. And there will always be those professed Christians that say yes but it also says it is by grace you are saved okay and that's unequivocal but like I said it's written that grace without you know faith without works is dead okay that we're saved by grace through faith okay that's what's written so there seems to be some inconsistency but remember there was a whole lot of paradoxes out there that you know I can tell you on one hand that I love money and on the other hand, I can tell you that I hate money. And it might sound inconsistent, but it's paradoxical. It's like Victor Hugo said. In this paradigm, yes, I hate to have to contend with the money masters of misery. Okay, because they make me as miserable as them. And it's all.